One of the most important factors in restorative dentistry is the treatment of endodontally treated teeth for the following reasons. The first one, because the importance for the patient in maintaining his teeth versus losing them. And the second one, because of a correct treatment will aid in its prognosis and longevity. In this video, we will follow a step-by-step -step clinical technique on the cementation of a prefabricated post and cord. I hope you enjoy it. Our first step will be to obtain a digital x-ray. This will help us in measuring the length of our canal. It is very important for us to know that at least we have to leave four millimeters of gut aperture in the apical third of our canal. Our second step will be to achieve complete isolation of the tooth. This is done by using a clamp and a rubber dam. The importance of this step is to avoid the contamination of the canal. Many endodontists seal their access using IRM, cavit, or glass ionomer. We should remove these seals using a diamond round long neck burr. These types of burrs will aid our access in the molar region. Using a round end burr, we must prepare the tooth surrounding our canal. This is where our core will rest, and this surface should always be even. Intra-radicular posts can be classified by their shape in parallel or conic. by their biomechanics in active or passive, by their biomaterials in metallic, like stainless steel or titanium, fiberglass, and carbon fiber, and by their clinical applications in prefabricated, casted, and pressed. As you can see, there are many options available in the market. But to simplify it, we need to answer one question. What is the function of an intraradicular post? The only function an intraradicular post has is to retain an artificial core. It was not meant to reinforce a tooth, nor to retain a ceramic crown. we should always use parallel passive serrated post. When we have good natural remnant, it is best to use a prefabricated post. When we have a poor natural remnant, it is best to use a casted post due to the difficulty of achieving a good isolation. I prefer to use fiberglass posts in the anterior teeth and metallic in the posterior teeth. Many researchers support as an advantage of the use of fiberglass posts its modules of elasticity very close to dentin. In this case, we are going to use Refor Post Fiberglass Post. Due to the diameter of the canal, we chose the number three post 
that needs a preparation with piezo drills number three, four, and five. Then, we wash the canal using a solution of 5% sodium hypochlorite. And we dry using paper points. To cement the post, we use U100 from 3M. Due to its simplified clinical technique that does not require an edge nor adhesive steps. Mixing time of U100 must not be over 20 seconds and should be transported into the canal with an oscillatory movement to avoid bubble formation. The post should be inserted carrying mixed cement and introduced with firm pressure. We apply light for two seconds and then remove excess. Finally, we cure for 20 seconds. For the fabrication of the core, we can use photo and auto cure resin, resin modified glass ionomer, and prefabricated fiber cores. In this case, we're going to use Refor Core, a prefabricated fiber core that is easy to use and has a better resistance to drilling. For the preparation of the new core, we can select diamond burrs with rounded or flat ends depending on the type of margin preparation we like. One of the Refor Post advantages is that it has a thin metal element that helps in the X-ray identification. As we've been able to see, a correct clinical sequence will help us in obtaining optimal results in the restoration of endodontically treated teeth. Don't forget to visit our webpage for questions and suggestions. Thank you very much.